if Sulaiman saw the jasad and his dua has been accepted of no other than him, uh, I mean, of him having of none else inheriting the kingdom, a similar kingdom or like a kingdom like the one he had, then when the jail comes, then you saying that he will be ruling from Jerusalem. Is there anything conflictual between the two? Between yes. Mm. When uh, Holy Jerusalem collapsed, Allah caused it to be destroyed. The only time it will be restored is when the Messiah comes. When the Messiah comes, he will rule the world from Jerusalem. They rejected Nabi Isa alayhi salam because they say he's dead. He never ruled the world from Jerusalem. But Allah says in the Quran about Nabi Isa alayhi salam that he will speak fil mahdi wa kahlan in the cradle. I don't know about London, but in the rest of the world, babies don't speak. Yeah. London is a strange place. <laughs> Especially the one square mile. <laughs> but in the rest of the world, babies don't speak. So if a baby speaks, it will be miraculous. Would that be a correct statement? But he will speak miraculously not only as a baby but also as an adult. But it's not miraculous for an adult to speak. If an adult does not speak, then that's a problem. Send him to the doctor. It's normal for an adult to speak. So then how can he speak miraculously as an adult? Yeah. How can he speak miraculously as an adult? Our big problem with the Ahmadiyya movement of the Qadianis is not so much the claim of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad that he's a Nabi. That's the red herring. <laughs> That's the skillfully constructed diversion. And they put the bait for us, you know, all go along that way. No, no, our essential problem, biggest problem of all with Mirza Ghulam Ahmad and the Ahmadiyya movement but the IMF is not interested in this subject. No. <laughs> is that they claim that Nabi Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, that he was not crucified, but that rather he lived until he was an old man. And then he traveled all the way to Kashmir and he died and he was buried there. <laughs> And this prophet of Allah, who was sent into the world as a prophet, from the day that they attempted the crucifixion, until the day when they say he was buried in Kashmir, he remained outside of public view. No one saw him. No one knew him. It's just a total blank on the page of his life. Does this make sense? <laughs> that a prophet of God would remain silent like a hermit inside a cave and has, have nothing whatsoever to say to the world for most of his life? No, no, no. In, in, in the Caribbean, we have a way to respond to that. We say, crick, crack, the wire bend. And that's the way the story ends. <laughs> it's a fable. But it's a very dangerous fable. They reject the belief that he will speak miraculously as an adult. And Allah says in the Quran, how can he speak miraculously as an adult? 
when he was silent, absolutely silent, all his life until he went to Kashmir and he died and he was buried there. Where is the miraculous speech? That's another. We say the miraculous speech, the miracle, is that, yes, he was not crucified. Allah made it appear like that and Allah took him away. And when he comes back, he will speak again. That is the miracle. That he will speak fil mahdi wa kahlan, miraculously. And this is the Quran demonstrating, providing you with the evidence that he will return. This is at the heart of Islamic eschatology. This is at the heart of Christian eschatology. And this is what Ahmadiyya has come to try to destroy. This is why the world of Islam looks upon Ahmadiyya as a grave threat. A grave threat. And if you come in our way, we're going to take care of you. Do not stand in our way. Our message to Ahmadiyya. If you want to live with us, but you do not constitute a threat to us, and you do not join with the enemies of Islam to try to destroy us, which, which includes the IMF, then you can live with us. Yes. We can allow you, we have a constitutional agreement, where we can allow you to live peacefully in our midst. And you can come in the market and you can buy and sell like all of us. Yes. And your properties will be safe, your life will be safe. That's right. And you can continue with your Ahmadiyya beliefs. But if you come in our way and you constitute a threat and you want to take control of the economic advisory board <laughs> on behalf of the IMF, no, the people of Pakistan have every right to stand up immediately. Stop it. And this is an indication that Pakistan knows the danger. Hmm? And so, Nabi Isa Islam will return. And when he returns, inshallah, the holy state of Israel will be restored. And he will rule the world from Jerusalem. And this is what Nabi Muhammad Islam said. He said about Nabi Isa Islam that he would be Hakimul Adil, a ruler who will rule on the basis of justice. And when he rules, therefore, it will be a ruling state. And therefore a Khilafah state. We use the term Khilafah state, they use the term Holy State. Okay? So there will be a Khilafah state in Jerusalem, restored, the one of Suleiman al-Islam. And Nabi Isa al-Islam will be ruling from that Khilafah state. Will he rule over us? Will he be our Nabi? Will, be, will we be in his Ummah? Is he our Nabi? Is he our Nabi? Yes, no, he's not. No. When you go in the grave, be careful, eh? <laughs> because the angel is going to come. And the tri preliminary question, before the questioning begins, the preliminary question is, who is your Nabi? Be careful. Our Nabi is Muhammad Islam. But our brothers, they have their Nabi, is Nabi Isa Islam. Yes. So it is his Ummah. His Ummah who will rule from Jerusalem. Not us. Our Ummah will be ruling from Makkah. Nabi with Imam al Mahdi. Okay. So the answer to you is before that holy state of Israel is restored, that just that <laughs> is going to create a state of Israel and get them to believe that this is holy Israel when it's an imposter. It is that imposter state that wants to replace the United States as the next ruling state in the world. But only Islamic eschatology is saying that. The rest of the world of Islamic scholarship is mysteriously silent. 